Titration is an important part of AP chemistry and chemistry in general. It's an analytic method that's used constantly to find the concentrations of substances that you're interested in or the amounts that's there. It's a great way of measuring things. And you start off with what we refer to as an analyte, whatever you are measuring and want to find out about. And you measure it out carefully in terms of volume. You can use a pipette that will give you an accurate volume, in this case of an acid solution, or if you are dissolving a solid, you'd end up weighing it. Once you dissolve your solution or you put it into your flask that you're going to do the measurement or the experiment in, you often have to add a indicator, a few drops, as little as possible, to color the solution. Sometimes the solutions themselves will change color as they go from one substance to another, then you don't need an indicator. Or you can use a pH probe if you're doing a reaction that has acid and base. Then you get your other item, a burette. A burette that has in it a solution that will react with your analyte. And you know about this solution. This is one that you make up yourself that you know the exact concentration and composition of. In fact, that's why you've got this spirit, because you're going to take something you know and find out about what you don't know. Titrant you know about, your analyte, you're analyzing it. That's what you are going to discover by its reaction, having one substance react with another and measuring the amounts. So you start off with an initial reading of this spirit. It's very difficult sometimes to start at zero, so very often you'll just pour some in and get this initial reading. Then you pour in titrate and you watch the reaction and you mix and you let these two react with one another and you keep observing it until you see the change that indicates that the analyte has completely reacted. In the case of indicator, if it has a pKa of a pH that you want for this final reaction, that's when you stop things. Or if you've got a substance that changes color when it's, and when it's used up, that color is missing then you end up stopping. But there is some indication here, maybe even your pH probe will help you, that the analyte has been completely used up and that's your final reading. Now that means that you're gonna have a data sheet that has a initial reading that you wrote down very carefully and a final reading that you ended up taking down very carefully. This is out of an AP exam. Let's see if you can read it accurately. Now, one of the things about a burette is that they read upside down because they're designed to pour things out. So you start at zero. And notice on this AP question, they didn't put a zero here. They presume that you know that a burette pours out. This reading starts with zero and then moves down to this volume. That volume is going to be 0.65 mLs. And you're expected to estimate between the lines. So you have a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and here's our 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and that bottom of, the bottom of the meniscus is at the 0.65 level. Then you have your final reading here, and again, this one is helpful because you start at 21 and you go down to 22. So you have 21, and that line is right on the money, it looks like, and I would estimate that as being 21.3. On the AP exam, you could have a little bit of leeway on this hundredth of an, of an ml. So if you said 0.66 or 0.63 or 0.31, you were given full credit for it. But then to find out how much titrant that you use to react with your analyte, you're going to have to do a subtraction. And again, with subtractions, we know things pretty well to the hundredth of an ml, so we'd carry our answer out to a hundredth of an ml and ml and that would give you the full point very often on a subtraction like this they will mark it wrong if you don't include the hundredths of an ml or the, and have the right number of significant figures for this this is a classic method of finding the amounts and concentrations by using a chemical reaction this is the beginning of analytic chemistry in fact here's the the first burette that was used and it was developed by a pharmacist Friedrich Bohr and he he wrote the book on analytic chemistry and he has detailed this method of titration and this book 
explains this classic method that's still used today. So we've been doing titrations for 150 years. Now these burettes haven't changed that much. They just have a Teflon valve here rather than these pinch claps. In fact, I used to use a pinch clap, but this is referred to as a Moore pipette when, when I first started teaching. Well, let's go to Wits University where we can see how a titration is performed in a typical lab. Here we've got two flasks. One has our unknown acid that we have the approximate concentration of. We're going to titrate it using a standardized sodium hydroxide solution that we know is 0.1088 molar, four significant digits. It's our acid that we don't know about, only one sig fig, so we'll need a titration to figure that out. And we'll start off by taking that acid with approximately 0.1 molar and put it in a flask. We'll use a volumetric pipette, which is very accurate. We can get 20.00 mLs of that unknown acid into a flask. Then we'll add some indicator. In this case, they've added some phenothaline. So we're starting off with our analyte, our HCl of the unknown concentration. We have 20.00 mLs of it and we're ready to add sodium hydroxide. We'll re get the initial reading here very accurately. And then we'll add the titrant. We gradually add and gradually add until finally we get to the point where we know all of the acid has been reacted because of the change in color by the indicator, this pretty pink that you get with phenothaline. Record the data, and then we can do our calculation. Here's the data that was recorded. We had a volume of base that we averaged to be 22.09. We have its concentration, 0 0.1088 molar. And then we can divide by the volume of the acid that we had in the flask, 20.00 mLs. And now we know the exact concentration of that acid. We've determined its concentration to four significant digits. That's what a titration can do. Burettes have been the standard for determining volumes and titrations for over 150 years. Now, however, there are some new devices that will relegate that beautiful burette to a museum. Cue the music for the auto titrators. <laughs> Mettler Toledo's titration excellence line instruments are tailored exactly for user workflows. Smart Sample uses RFID technology to optimize workflow efficiency. At the balance, the sample data and weight are saved onto the RFID chip attached to the sample beaker. Together with the sample, the data is transferred to the excellence titrator, where it is read and saved. Therefore, Smart Sample prevents transcription and sample mix up errors. Thanks to the one click usability concept, analyses are executed with just one simple keystroke. Status Light helps to increase efficiency by visual signaling. The operator can stay in touch with the titrator from anywhere in the lab. So that's our digital titration. Note, we didn't have to read any meniscus, we didn't look at a burette, there is no scale. In fact, even the data was recorded electronically. With this volume of acid and this volume of base that we get from the midpoint of the pH curve, we can calculate the concentration of this acid just like we did before, except with even greater accuracy.